I look at patient advocacy groups as true partners because in rare diseases, it's truly teamwork which gets patients therapies. And I look at advocacy groups as UPA as being our true partners in navigating these rare diseases, partnering with us not only on patient education, on getting patients to treatment, to uh, informing patients about the right way to diagnose these disorders. So I, I don't think we would be able to move the field forward without a strong partner such as the OPA. It's really critical to have a patient advocacy group because they really, I mean, it's in the name, they advocate for the patient at all levels. You know, just making sure the patient's voice is heard, really talking to um, experts and scientists and making sure that they're, the mission that they're following is what patients need, um, connecting patients to experts, all of that I think is um, really hard to do without a very organized, dedicated patient advocacy group. And then also helping, again, like push therapeutics and making sure that what's important is what's being researched. What's important to patients is what's being researched. We could not do what we're doing without the United Porphyria Association. And I think one of the biggest issues is a lot of patients with this disease, they feel alone. They feel alone in a lot of ways because if you look at them exteriorly, they look fine. There's nothing physically wrong with them as opposed to patients with other diseases that take care of, especially liver diseases, those individual liver diseases, you see people turn yellow. You see them have muscle wasting. You see them have other complications. These patients with porphyria, they have no overt sign or symptoms that they are sick. So when people look at them, they think they should be healthy. And they're not because inside they have a lot of issues, whether it's with erythropoietic portoporphyria with the skin burning, or whether it's the acute hepatic porphyria and the nerve damage associated with that. These are very life debilitating symptoms that are just not overt. And because of that, these patients need a lot of help, you know, and they feel alone because they feel like they're the only ones with it. Without uh, the United Porphyria Association, people would feel even more alone. So hopefully with this organization, they will help them come together and make them no, they are not unique. They're unique in a lot of ways, but they're also, they have diseases that other people have and they need help to help them manage through and live with these diseases. United Porphyrius Association is a very important um, uh, organization. Um, it is uh, a patient advocacy group. Um, uh, I am a part of the Porphyrius Consortium. It's a group of clinical researchers in the United States that um, uh, we all specialize in the care and the study of porphyria patients. Um, and the United Porphyrias Association is our main patient advocacy group partner um, in under, for us to undertake clinical studies to better understand the porphyrias. Um, the UPA also serves as a fantastic resource for porphyria patients, whether it's patients who have questions about how to make a diagnosis, how to go about finding physicians who know about the porphyrias or patients who have questions about treatment or um, uh, advice about prevention. Um, uh, so I think the, the UPA is a vitally important um, uh, part uh, for uh, resource for, for not just patients but also researchers like myself. I would say the importance of the United Porphyrias Association is a place to get up-to-date information about the porphyrias it provides uh, lots of uh, information both for patients, for patient families, for referring physicians, um, and, and for um, others who are interested in the porphyrias and problems of the porphyrias. Um, and it is also uh, really uh, a place for, for people to um, have support groups and uh, sort of chat rooms and, and to ask questions and to, to get answers from physicians, from other patients. So it, it's really a, a wonderful addition to uh, pr provide something for these people with rare diseases so they don't feel as though they're entirely alone uh, without any support. Well, it's important to have uh, patient support uh, organizations uh, to provide advice to patients and uh, to um, enable them to connect with uh, specialists 
around the country who can help them. And also, uh, it's important for researchers to get input from patients on, on how their diseases affect them and, and what kind of uh, research would benefit them the most. The United Porphyria Association is a new advocacy group for patients with porphyria. The reason that this group is going to be so successful and already is, is because they have dynamic staff, they are patient oriented, and the medical group who are experts from the Porphyrias Consortium are the basis of their scientific advisory board. And we on the board are interactive with patients and with the advocacy group. And if an advocacy group has the doctors behind it and the doctors are willing to talk to the patients, which we all do very often, sometimes every day, uh, it really helps patients understand their disease and it helps us doctors understand exactly what the patients are uh, you know, suffering from and it encourages us to develop better treatments and to provide them with the management that perhaps their local doctors or their primary doctors are unaware of and we're happy to talk to the primary doctors to give them guidance so that they can take care of these patients as best so they have the best possible quality of life.